Hey y'all, welcome back to Adventuring with Amanda. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're talking about van life safety. We're gonna jump right into it. I've had some really weird experiences the last couple days and um, this is gonna be part one because I have part two to share with you guys as well. But we're talking about van life safety because um, safety is important, right? And I had two experiences in the last two days where I didn't feel safe, which is weird. That normally doesn't happen to me. I'm generally, if you've been following me for a while, I'm generally a very, very fearless woman. Um, I'm very confident. I'm very fearless. I'm very aware of my surroundings at all times. But in the last two days, I, I had experiences where I felt scared. And it's okay to feel scared, um, but I want to share with you guys what happened and how I dealt with these situations. So Winston and I have been in Flagstaff, and um, he turned 11 on Sunday, um, and he goes in for dental surgery on Monday. So I really wanted to take him up to Flagstaff, and I, I'm sorry if my... Uh, phone if my phone is kind of wonky right now because it's like sitting on my bed on my tripod but I wanted to take him up to Flagstaff because I really wanted to be spend some time with him just me and him so I sought out um, some solitude for the two of us I really have been kind of just like stressed out about city life since I've been home the last month and like in a house and I really needed to get back into my van so I went up north not quite to Flagstaff but near Flagstaff so I could get some solitude and have some privacy um, for me and kiddo so I found a really great spot I had like two very distant neighbors but my spot was great um, if you guys saw we had some cows show up on our um, at our campsite. We camp up there on national forest land. So no, we're not on a farmer's land. We're on national forest land up there. And um, I found this spot kind of like behind these trees that I felt was like really great and private. And um, if you watched my videos, you saw we had like the awning up and everything was great and everything was good. Well, yesterday morning, um, there was actually quite a bit of like truck traffic tr uh, on the forest road trucks like you know Fords Dodges you know regular trucks not semi trucks but like trucks so around 11 a.m. I noticed this gray Dodge Ram and it seemed to be driving back and forth on the forest road um, even though I was set quite a bit back from the forest road, I could see that the it was a male in the driver's seat. He looked to be alone. Was just kind of like casing what was going on with my campsite. Um, it he it was definitely a diesel truck. And at one point, I heard him literally idling where like we were out of line of sight of each other, but I could hear his truck idling for like 20 minutes. And I started to get kind of nervous. Um, I normally don't get nervous, but I was like, I don't really like that this guy keeps driving by. He's like idling nearby. Like is, does he have binoculars? Is he looking at me? Because I couldn't see him and he couldn't see me, but I could hear his truck. I could hear that it was right there. So by 3 p.m., I decided that I kept thinking about it, and I was just not comfortable with the situation because I was very much camping alone. The people in the RVs uh, that were distant from me were, like, I didn't even see any people, so I didn't even know if they were around. Um, and something just told me that it wasn't safe. And, and when you, when you have that gut feeling, so when you have a feeling in your heart, it's fear. When you have a feeling in your, like in your stomach, that's intuition. So I had this feeling in my stomach and I was like, 
I've only been here for 24 hours. I set up my awning and I did all my stuff, but something is just like not right. So around 3.30 p.m. I decided to pack up and and go somewhere else. I'm very familiar with that area up north um, in northern Arizona, so I have plenty of spots to go to. And you know, I carry a GUN. I don't want YouTube to <laughs> demonetize me, but I carry a pew pew. Um, you know, to especially in, in 2022, we live in a very violent, crime-ridden society here in America, and I'm not about to take chances, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to have to use it. I don't want to have to use it, even though I have it. I don't want to have to use it. So it's better to just leave. So I left. And the next spot that I went to had a ton of campers, and I was kind of shocked because it's like after Labor Day weekend, and I also noticed that there were a lot more car and like tent campers than I've ever seen there before. In fact, the air, the new area that I moved to seemed to be like more populated than I had ever seen it. But I went to my camp spot that I've been camping at in like for like two and a half years. Um, I was surprised that that spot was open. So I, I stopped there. I didn't take all my stuff out. I was like, you know, we'll just be here for a night and kind of hang out and chill. Um, I was tired from having to like take my awning down and, and, you know, take my camp apart. So I decided that Winston and I were just going to like hang out and watch some Thursday night football on prime because the chiefs are playing the chargers and I'm a big sports person. So I was like, Oh, let's put on some football. So it was around 7 30 PM pitch black. I'm in the middle of national forest. So on national forest land in Arizona, you can't just go like shooting guns and like hunting. I know a lot of people ask about hunting season, but like in Arizona, you can't just like go onto into Coconino National Forest and like hunt stuff. Like that, that's just not how it works here in Arizona. So it was around 7:30 p.m. and we were watching the game. Well, Winston was passed out, and I was watching the game. And all of a sudden, I heard this massive shotgun blast outside my van. And I'm pretty familiar with firearms, and um, this was definitely a shotgun blast, and it was just one. So I texted my mom, because I always text her my pin location, um, so she knows where I'm at at all times, and um, I decided after a minute, because the, the blast actually woke Winston up, and Winston does not wake up, like... He's not afraid of thunderstorms. He's not afraid of fireworks, anything like that. And he woke up and he started to bark. And I was sitting here and I was texting my mom and I'm like, I don't really know what to do, but I'm scared. And again, I normally don't get scared. <sighs> but there's a lot of people around, a lot more people than usual. And normally that makes me feel better but all of a sudden I was feeling really scared. So I made the decision to call non-emergency. So I didn't call 911, I just called, I looked up the Flagstaff non-emergency, a really kind person answered the phone, and I was like, hey, I'm not really sure if this is appropriate, but like I'm camping, I'm off of this exit, and, um, I heard a really loud shotgun blast outside my van and I just, I don't know if I should report it or not, but I, I'm just kind of nervous. I, I, it doesn't sound right. And, um, so I just wanted to report it just in case, right? Like probably five minutes had passed between the time I heard it and the phone call that I made. So the gentleman on the phone reassured me that it was definitely appropriate. If I'm hearing something like that, I need to report it. And so I was like, okay. And he's like, you know, is it okay if deputies call you? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like I'm camping. Um, so, okay, whatever. So I didn't really think like anything would come of it because I, again, I didn't really know if it was appropriate to be contacting non-emergency in that, in that scenario. But five minutes later, I got a call from the deputies. Oh my gosh. And the deputy, so they, it was the sheriff's deputy of Coconino County and he was so kind. And so he was like, Amanda, I just, I'm at this exit where you're at. Tell me how to find you. 
and I was like, I'm like in the middle of the national forest. Um, I, I, I'm, it's going to take you a minute to find me. Like there are a ton of people here. I'm not really sure. And so I, I, I gave him directions. What's up, honey? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. What are you doing outside? I had to come. I left these outside. Oh, okay, baby. Hey, um, tomorrow I have, I have some sports cards I want to give you. Okay. Okay. So are you going to be around tomorrow? Um, yeah, if you want to just come knock on my door, you can. Okay, honey, no problem. I'm, I'm just off. taking a YouTube video right now. I'm just off of school. I'm off of school. Okay, honey, sounds good. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Be safe. You too. So, um, sorry, there's a little neighbor kid. Um, so the, the sheriff's deputy called me and he was like, um, how can I find you? And I was like, oh, I don't know. So I told him to go to, um, the, the west side of the exit so he could find me. I told him that I would try and track him down with my solar lights. So about five minutes later, cause I knew it would take him a good, like five minutes to even get into the vicinity of where I was at. Um, I got out of my van because my mom was like, is anyone outside? Did you hear anything? And I was like, mom, I don't want to go outside. Like I'm scared. Right. So, um, five minutes later, like after I got off the phone with the deputy, I went outside and actually, cause he was like, I have my overhead lights on. So I saw him coming down the hill. So I was like, sweet. So I took out my solar light. That's like an accordion. And I started waving it in the air and that's how he found me. And so I was outside and, um, he, it, I mean, it was pitch black. You guys it was pitch black by this time. It was probably like eight o'clock. And, um, you know, we couldn't see anything. And so I was waving the solar lights. And so they stopped the SUV, you know, the bright lights were like shining at me. And, and he was like, he was like, Amanda, good job. Like shining the lights. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you guys never would have found me. Right. So this, the deputy and who he was with, um, a younger guy, he probably looked about my age. So friendly, so kind. They kept calling me by my name, which to make me feel comfortable, I appreciated. They asked for my license plate and stuff like that. They wanted to run my plates. Totally understand that. You know, when when sheriff deputies show up, they have to know like who they're dealing with, right? So um, he started to ask me questions, and I was like, you know, I felt really bad. I was like, I don't want to waste your time, right? And like your resources, but you know, this is what I heard. This is when I heard it. This is the situation. And I was like, you know, I was at this other location earlier. I gave him the, the road, the forest road. And, you know, I just, I, this truck was making me really nervous. So I decided to move. And so then he was like, well, what, tell me more about that. And I was like, oh, well, yeah. I mean, I guess since you're here, I can tell you more about that. So I gave him like the make and model of the vehicle. And I was like, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble here. You know, I'm not trying to profile anybody, anything like that but I gave him all of the information and he, they were so kind, so understanding, said they were going to investigate, um, the, the gunshot that I heard. I also told them that when I was at the other location, I had heard multiple gunshots, but I assumed someone was just taking like target practice on their land or, or something like that. People do own land out there. You can shoot guns, you know, on your land if, if that's what you choose to do. Um, so I had told him about that as well, but that didn't make me nervous because that's kind of normal. You know, I, I hear like four or five gunshots at a time and, you know, I know what it sounds like when someone's like taking target practice or they're hunting or whatever. So, um, they were so kind and they asked me if they wanted, if I wanted them to check back up with me in like an hour to make sure I was okay. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste your resources. I just, something wasn't right. And I just wanted to make sure that I made it known. And they were very, um, understanding. And they were like, you didn't waste your time. Like, that's what we're here for. We were already parked like right off the I-17 and, you know, and then the point was made to me that, you know, they are, um, you know, public safety officers, right? So it is their job to keep us, um, safe as a whole in public. So, so that's cool. So, um, you know, I do carry, um, a 22 caliber. Um, I also carry a hatchet 
and then I also carry a knife and I carry my knife on me at all times I have it on my person at all times whether it's on my purse in my pocket on my belt I always carry my Smith & Wesson knife uh, with me because you can never be too sure and this is also an utility a utility knife so I use it to cut a lot of things um, you know when I'm camping you know even when I'm at home I use it to cut tags off clothing and stuff so um, you always want to to make sure that you are protected whatever that means for you and um, if you see something say something so I like I said I felt bad like I didn't want to waste their time and I didn't want to waste their resources but um, the officer the deputy excuse me also said you know it's like well if there was another crime committed and it turns out to be this sort of vehicle then you know and you tell us that this vehicle was doing this like that's really important to know so so I appreciated them being so kind and understanding um, but we got away unscathed <laughs> so we didn't have any problems but that also reminds me of the time that I was in Rapid City over the summer and two very strange men approached me and I actually had to brandish my weapon to get them away from me so that's gonna be part two but all in all we're safe we're fine the deputies have all the information that they need and that they needed and ultimately I felt safe and got a good night's rest so always be aware always look around um, oh also the other thing I forgot to say um, I saw this really sketchy like person walking around and he was like he seemed to be like kind of going from campsite to campsite and when he came near mine I kind of acted like I was busy because he kind of freaked me out and I didn't want to talk so you know make note of clothing make note of vehicle make and model you know I was able to tell the deputies that this this truck was pre year 2000 because I know a lot about vehicles so I was able to give them a lot of details which is really really helpful so be aware that is your biggest tool be aware listen to your gut and be armed with something whatever that means for you whether it's bear spray um, you know pepper spray there, there's lots of different things that you can use whether you're a male or a female it doesn't matter you have to protect yourself so that is a van life safety story part one part two is gonna be rapid city where I had to brandish my weapon to get these men away from me stay tuned for that I know this was a long video I appreciate you guys watching and hanging in there with me when my neighbor kid came over to say hi the neighbor kids love me I think it's because I bought them ice cream from the ice cream truck one time but anyways thank you for being here like and subscribe I'll see you for part two